Hey everybody, hey, what's up? It's me, Generic Pie, and this is another video for you today. This is a game against Mark M. Um, so me and Mark were actually trying to line up a game of, of comb um, the other day, but unfortunately, due to some technical issues at my end, we couldn't really get that going. So we decided to have a friendly game of loam instead, and it turned out to be a bit of a humdinger. Hence, I have made a video for you today. Um, so Mark is a super nice dude. We'd never played before, but we did one over voice chat, and um, he's one of the biggest supporters of um, of just like content creators in general. Is always liking, leaving comments and stuff. So always really appreciate that. Um, He's also like a really big proponent of the expansions um, and he's trying to get me to play Wom, and uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I'm inching towards it, you know, <laughs> it's like the gateway drug of Loam is starting to open up the world to, 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 to um, kings and to, to warriors. So um, maybe, not promising anything, but maybe at some point you'll get some of that on this channel. Um, so in this one, as I said before, it was a friendly game um, as a result. I probably played a little bit looser than I would normally play. Didn't kind of, you know, um, wring my hands over as, over decisions quite as much. But I do think there were a lot of interesting situations and and stuff to analyze, nonetheless. Um, um, and so, so we'll we'll see how how this looks in in retrospect. Um, I was playing as the shadow. Mark was playing as the free people. Um, the starting cards were: I had a new power is rising, and we won't go back. Um, so I'd never actually played this card before, but it seems very contextual based upon Smeagol being in play. Um, and Danes and Axenbo are just, you know, solid cards. Can't really complain about those two. Um, so kind of a, a very symmetrical role for me. Kind of, you've got the two musters if you want to do some minion mustering. Um, you can move some armies, but not going to be doing too much too quickly. And then for Mark, um, heavy, heavy character dice. Um, but against two eyes, do you want to be moving that much? Especially with the, the, the lingering threat of the chief. So tricky one. Just to clarify, Mark didn't separate any companions in this game. Um, maybe he's got some alternative mofos in here. Who knows? Decides to play axe and bow um, initially. Since you're very unlikely to move with all three of the character dice, I think that makes sense. Um, I do the standard Baradur to Gorgoroth move. Mark moves the Fellowship. They are hit. They are not revealed. Um, Gandyman perishes. Um, I move Isengard to war. So I was kind of thinking, I was discussing this with Mark at the time. It's a bit of an interesting situation as a shadow because I'm kind of getting my head around the loam side of things. Um, there are pros and cons to getting each of the respective um, minions at this point. <coughs> if I get Sauron to war and get um, Gothmog, then Sauron's a war. That means he can get Galadriel, which I don't want, given the fact that he's just lost the Narya die. If I, I can get the Balrog, that won't give access to Galadriel because no one needs to be at war. But then that gets the elves down. <laughs> Which in turn kind of you know doesn't help when you're trying to get places under siege. Um, so then I was like, well, I've got a new powers rising. Gandhi, there's no guarantee that he rolls a, a will next turn. So let's just you know I'm, I'm going to lose the potential to do Gandalf denial next turn, but I do want to get an extra die. So I'll just go the old-fashioned route and get Saruman. Um, Mark uses the the. Um, the army movement died to do standard army moves to Old Forest Road and Western Met and move to Moranon. Um, Mark decides to start getting the elves down. Um, I get Saruman. So I think this is a slight misplay on my part. I could have, I should have held this die until the end in case he moved and then I could have got the chief. Um, as it was, I wasn't really paying too much attention to the dice order. But this could have been crucial. As it was, because I did this, it then... Because if I'd kept that die, there's a strong chance that Mark doesn't actually move a second time. Because he's a bit too afraid of the risk. You know, you're moving twice against two eyes. you got to move, but equally could be very painful. Maybe he would have moved anyway. And it would have made no difference. But it certainly may encourage Mark to move. Um, so... He moves, and then they're not hit anyway. So as it turned out, it didn't make any difference, potentially. 
Um, if I suppose if he hadn't moved, it would have made a difference. Um, but then again, what's he going to do with the second character die? With the, with the character die anyway? Does does he have any cards he can play? He can't play a card. Can't. The only thing that I can see on the board right now that makes any sense would be to move this army like here or here, and that feels like a bit of a waste. So, so maybe he would have moved anyway. Um, I move Miranda to Dagolad, and we end turn one. Go on to turn two. The free people draw file and riders of Theoden. Um, and I draw the ring is mine and Denethor's folly. Roll another slightly odd roll. Um, all musters and two or three musters and two army dice. Not a terrible roll for the early part of the game. He's just about to go, you know, he's going to move into Moria. So having three, um, eyes isn't horrible. Um, equally, uh, musters are great in the early game. Mark rolls another very awkward roll. Um, well, the first roll wasn't too awkward. This is an awkward roll. Two characters and two palantirs. When and this is a kind of side of the game when you want to have some some mustering capacity. So what did I do? I played a new power is rising. Okay, I think I looked at this dice roll and thought maybe I can muster. Um, potentially, there's potential here to do a triple muster um, in Orthanc get this mega buffed while Gandhi's nowhere to be seen and just try and do a blitz on um, on this before he has the chance to defend. Um, as it happens, he does have Riders of Theoden, um, but it's an awkward one. It's kind of the most awkward one for this situation because you can only really muster in Edoras and Edoras has already been evacuated. So yeah, if you had the, one of the other mustering cards or, or whatever, the, other, the main one that musters in a free settlement, forget what it's called, that would have been great, but Theoden's slightly too late. Um, and I don't think... I suppose Mark could. Is there a way you can separate a companion and get them down to this army? That would be quite an interesting option, actually. Move once, and then hope you don't get hit. And then if you say you're here, one, two, three... Ah, no, it still wouldn't work. You'd still only be able to separate, like, a major companion. And you ain't going to send Strider <laughs> to, to do that job. You're not going to send Strider to clean the toilets <coughs> in Helm's Deep. So no, that wouldn't quite work. You'd need a, a, a removal card. Um, so another option I could have done here, I suppose, looking back, is this would have been a prime time to get the, the B-Rog, Big Billy B-Rog, into Moria to scare the Fellowship, because this is the critical... Since Mark didn't move, I'm guessing he passed because I moved first. So I, that that would be a great time to get the Balrog. So if he is revealed into Moria, uh, or if he, you know when he passes through Moria, it's going to be extra scary. Um, but as it was, I was kind of in thinking about the military side of things, and I'm afraid of getting the Balrog and moving the Elves really close to war when I'm actually when he can't muster right now. So giving up a little bit of of um, Pain for fellowship in order to make a gain on the military side of things. I guess these are the decisions you juggle with in Loam a little bit more with stuff like the Balrog. Um, let me know your thoughts. Is that a, a mistake on my part? Should I be prioritizing getting the Balrog in this situation? Play New Powers Rising. He, uh, Mark instantly uses a ring, knowing that if I attack into this army, he hasn't got a scout. So if I attack into this army, then, and I do a, you know, a lot of pain, a lot of, lot of, cause a lot of pain, then, um, he can't even move this army back in without using a ring anyway. So why not just use the ring now and do the the whole shebang? Um, seeing that, I'm like, okay, I've got a ring now. Your work here is done. I'm just going to do other stuff because I don't want to... Now, early game musters. It was an opportunistic play to consider going for the whole of Rohan. Going for the whole of Rohan can go terribly, as we all know. Now this is actually looking very strong. I'm like, yeah, we'll we'll put that on ice. We'll we'll go back to that later, and I will use this for more conventional means. So what I decide to do is, now that I've played that, I can get quite a beefy army to go for Lorien, and I'm thinking I could use these dice, potentially even using a ring, to get a nice setup to put Lorien under siege when the elves are nowhere near war, and potentially get an an a cheap Lorien before Galadriel is in play. Lorien is a scary beast, a scary proposition with the the, the the kind of looming spectre of Galadriel. 
But I feel like if you can get it early, because of the you know the situation, uh, the, the the dice context, it can be a very useful thing to to get rid of. You know, get rid of that, um, get rid of Galadriel, remove that option for dice, remove that you know special dice capability power thingy, and get a cheap stronghold. Because it's hard to get cheap strongholds in Loam. That's one of the things I'm learning. Like in um, in base, you can quite often get a cheap cheap Lorien. Um, whereas in, in Loam, cheap Lorien is 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 a, is, a, is a kind of a a real luxury. But that's my thinking, at least. Mark moves the Fellowship. Um, they are missed. I combine armies in Dimmel Dale. Mark plays Rise of Theoden. Because what else are you going to do with that Palantir? I probably don't want to move again this round with this many eyes, Moria. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I get Sauron to war. Yes, I do. Mark. Mark does move the Fellowship again. Okay, so slightly risky, but looking healthy at this stage. Probably maybe wants to do it before I get the Balrog. There's a chance I could get the Balrog with this die. Maybe I should have. Um, I do get two hits, though. Um, and the Fellowship is revealed. Decides to do you eat the Corruption there. I think Mark eats the Corruption, yep. And then I draw a three, so that's nice for me. Um, and what happens here? So Mark decides to just eat the full three. Um, probably to get out of Mor... I think when we were talking about this, the idea was to get out of Morgul wound range to get into that sweet four spot. My personal opinion is that I've made a pact... I've made a... Like a I've made an executive decision that whenever I get a three tile in any situation, barring when I've got Athalas and, and Striders in the Fellowship, I'm going to do a random. There are going to be times when I'm going to get runs of four Striders as first random, as has happened to me relatively recently, which sucks like colossal balls. But I think you have to kind of, in my mind, you have to view it in the long term. And, you know, Java is a is a capricious and, and cruel mistress. But in theory, it should only happen one every six games. Um, and I think the overall, you know, losing Strider isn't always that bad if you lose him for a three. Um, but eating three, every time you, you get an early three, it's probably, I think in the long run, is going to cause you more pain than the random Striders that you get every now and then. Because it just makes, you know, if all it takes now is, is a bunch of, you know, a Candles for Corpses, a, a good Isildur's Bane, etc, etc. And suddenly you're in a world of pain when you get into Mordor. So that's that's my view on, on the kind of the, the thing. Like, I know it sucks to get, to, to get an early Strider draw, but... Yeah, I think what I probably would have done, actually, is probably just eaten the Axe... It's risky for Morgul Wound. I would have just done the Axe and Bow for the one, and then done a random for the three. And then... You're probably sitting somewhere around one corruption right now, on average. If you draw the average of a of a two two level leader, Panion, sorry. Instead, marks a full corruption, which is quite beefy. Nice, nice, nice meat shield here, but that's a lot of corruption. <coughs> um, maybe that's why I saved this. Start. I saved it so now I get the the chief sniffing the the um the bum holes of the fobbits. The, um, and we go on to turn number three. I just imagine he's just, this is just a big, a big black hound dog. Just go. <laughs> uh, that's just me. Um, okay. I get some pretty, pretty nice cards here. Pretty nice cards. I get all patrol and Corsairs of Umbar. And Mark gets, you know, the way there and Thranduril's Archers. Um, I'm rolling a lot of eyes right now. I just rolled three more eyes, so I'm currently... Okay, plus two on eyes. Um, and Mark gets the exact same terrible roll that he had the previous turn. So that's... That really sucks. Can't get Gandalf the White. Can't protect your Elven strongholds. Um, and then, because I've got four eyes in here, moving sucks as well. So, every... To quote the Descendants, if anyone knows that punk band, everything sucks today. Um... 
Right, so... Mark thinks about moving. Decides to hide. That's wise, I think. You know, I could have a... Something that, that you know, a lure of the ring or something like that. So yeah, good to hide. Um, I consider my options, and I just since he's hidden, I just decide to go for the orc patrol while he. I can you know actually get some 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 free cycling. Play the orc patrol, and I draw Smeagy. That pesky little swine Smeagol comes into play, making the meat shield even more meaty. So that's good for the corruption game for for the free people. Um does mean that Mark can't hide if he does move using Aragorn's ability, so Shrider's ability, sorry. Um, and then I draw into Grond. Mark plays you know the way there, so two Smeagol tiles are added to the pool. Um, I start doing, now I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can really get greedy and actually um, get this army camped outside of Old Forest Road this turn so that I'm, I'm actually doing the, it's more of a base, typical base play, but um, because he can't get Galadriel until the elves are at war, um, there are two schools of thought here. Either you just go for Lorien, like, and just smash the door down and try and kill it before you can get Galadriel, or I try and be cute and get this army up here and then hope that in future turns Mark doesn't roll a ton of musters so that I can get wood. So he's kind of almost in a bind between. Oh, do I muster Larian when I could also muster the Woodland Realm? And and it just makes things a bit more complicated. And it also puts the pressure on Mark to do the initial um, muster to put pressure on um, on me to attack Lorien. So it's kind of making him use his own musters against himself in a way, or at least using the musters to, 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 um, to do the work for me. Um, since I've got Corsairs now, I start moving this army across here as well, so that kind of gets two things done at once. Um, Mark moves the Fellowship, they are hit twice, it's an eye, um, so uh, that's two, reveal two, two pain. Um, plays Axe and Bow, and um, eats one Corruption. So I suppose the option, other option there would be to kill Smeagy, Smeagol. Um, I don't... I, I guess there's pros and cons. You've just put two. So maybe what Mark's thinking is, I've just put two additional tiles in here. I want to improve my chances of hitting, of making, getting good value out of these tiles. Therefore, eating the corruption. But um, dangerous game again. Getting the corruption go even higher. Um, so I don't know. Is that was that your thinking, Mark? Was the idea to to maximize the the card you just played, which gets the Smeagol tiles in there? Not sure. Um, I move leadership around and get the hound back onto the hound, sorry, the chief onto Path Celebrant. At one point, I just started calling him the hound as if everyone called him the hound, and I was like, is that just, is that an actual thing? Um, but yeah, I kind of use that interchangeably with the chief. Um, so yeah, then Mark hides, and I decide to, now that the Balrogs, you know, I, I purposely didn't bring him in because I didn't want to get everyone close to war. Um, so I now decide to get an extra dive from Gothmog. Um, what other options did I have there? I think, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and we get on to turn number four. I draw the gates are closed and long plan musterings of a long plan war. Mark gets um, the lamp Mimrahill and Miracle Gladriel. So I got rid of the gates are closed. I'm still kind of in, in a space where I'm not fully... I don't know the full value of all of the new um, loan cards. Some of them are obviously very strong. Others I'm less less sure about the value of. Given um, the, the Smeagol situation, I'm actually... We Won't Go Back has a lot more value. I think I initially... I almost forgot I had this card because I'd never used it before. Didn't really know what it was. It was around now that I realized, oh, oh, wow, this is actually like the perfect situation, especially because Mark didn't. I should have actually played it last turn, um, but especially because Mark has purposely kept Smeagol as the leader of the Fellowship. I need to play this because this is like never in any game probably going to have more value than it has right now, right? That's like, this is the only time this card is actually any good, I guess. Um, I imagine most people don't play this in most situations. Um, probably gets used for the fear of their masters more often, I imagine. So I decided to get rid of the Gates of Closed. Gates of Closed is obviously, I think it's a, seems like a pretty strong card to me. 
um, to play around Moria and um, getting into Mordor. But I'm looking at this like this is a super strong um, um, fellowship. So I'm like, yeah, it feels like I'm going to be kind of like, is, is this really going to be a game where killing companions is going to really help me that much like around Mordor? It might even help him to thin out the fellowship. So I'm like, yeah, okay, I don't really need that card that much. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So now Mark finally gets a will. Um, I get this uh, pretty pretty mixed roll. Still getting lots of eyes. And now, yeah, straight away. So Mark passes. I play We Won't Go Back, which we love to see. And then I draw into Cruel, cruel Weather. So uh, looking good on the... Well, looking like it's going to be... Uh, look at this hand, man. Pretty stacked hand. Um, yeah, it was around this time. I think I took quite a long time to to discard cards. And there was another round where I had a crazy stacked hand. And like I was going to mark up. Poor Mark was sat there agonizing. Well, wait, well, sorry, waiting while I agonized over my hand because this is a bit of a beastly hand. Um, I suppose, I mean, Denethor's kind of sucks, but I've literally got an army that's going to be going into Lorien. So Devery had an increased value for me because Desperate Battle is great, but it gives the opposition a, a, a boost, whereas Devery just helps you. Um, um, I continue combining armies in, sorry, I combine armies in Orthanc, move up to um, Northern Rovanian. Uh, Mark moves the fellowship. They are missed. Um, I decide now is my chance to put Lorien under siege. Um, why did I do that? Um, well, I, I suppose maybe I was worried about him having a power too great. He's got two musters here, potentially three, but I know that I, that is that die is surely earmarked for Gandhi. So. Um, and I think I was thinking, if he puts, if, what was the thinking? I think I was thinking, if Mark puts Lorien down himself, so the elves down himself, then I attack. He still needs to get Galadriel. So that would be another die. Okay. I mean, I could have, I still had time to wait, maybe. Because he hasn't actually got Galadriel yet. But anyway, that's what I did. Um, now Mark gets Galadriel. But, so now I'm suddenly pressured to attack this bad boy. Um, to uh, prevent additional mustering. So I guess that's what I did. Okay, so yeah, I must have attacked into... Oh wait, no, did I go for Ophrys Road? Maybe I'm letting him get one muster inside Lorien. Yeah, so I'm going for Old Forest Road. Um, oh, yeah, because... Right, 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 right. Of course, this makes sense. Because he still can't muster inside Lorien because the elves aren't actually at war yet. So it still makes sense for me to kind of slow play it a little bit more. North go down. The guy in Old Forest Road just gets murked. South runs go down because I'm kind of slowly prepping for Corsairs. Um, again, after White comes into play, um, I ki I literally just killed the, t the, 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 the card drawing... Um, die because I just I don't want to draw any cards. I don't want to be overdrawn. I'm already overdrawn with a really strong hand, so I just killed that die. Um, and I and Mark, I'm kind of yeah forcing Mark to to do yeah. I'm kind of my my hope here. I purposely didn't want to put the elves at war, so the next turn hopefully Mark doesn't roll a bunch of musters, and then I can kind of you know really capitalize on the elven situation. Uh, Mark plays Imrahil, and with my final die I. Uh, Get a red tile in the pool and draw into Captain of Despair. Um, so Mark draws Book of Mazarbal and Smeagol helps Nice Master. And I draw, yeah, Warmest on Tall and King's Reel. So like, what a hand! Yeah, this is the real one I was agonizing over. Because this is this is crazy. Look at all these cards. I've got the two best cards in the game. I've got Captain of Despair. I've got Grand. I've got a Desperate Battle. Got War Masor and Tall, Captain of Despair. Um, I guess people on, on paper, the obvious two cards to get rid of, like in terms of overall value, would be the King is Revealed and Denethor's Folly. But I do want to have two useful um because I don't have the um the Witch King, the the, the normal Witch King. Um I do want to have two cards to use in combat. I don't want to use a Relentless Assault in this fight, that seems bad. Um so I want to keep the Desperate Battle and the Devry of Orthanc for that. So I killed the King is Revealed, I believe. And then it's between Warm Sorin Toil and Captain of Despair. 
maybe people think I'm crazy. Um, but let me just figure out what this actually does again. <laughs> okay, so I kind of agonized over it for a bit, and I decided that ultimately Warmer Soren Toil, given he's got such a massive like gang of of, compa of um, companions in here, I'm probably going to get more value out of Warmer Soren Toil. Um, Cactus, but having additional eyes in here is obviously really nice. But I'm still thinking like he can just take he can just um, eat up most of the the um, the hits with his mega uh, fellowship. So Warmer Soren Toil is a bit more insidious. It actually takes advantage of the fact that he's got a massive fellowship, and it means I can kill some of his nice cards. Maybe I can kill some end cards if this becomes a thing. You know, kill some blue tiles, kill some, you know, just stuff that he wants to keep. So I decided to to kill Captain of Despair. Maybe that's insane. Um, naturally, I then roll like a million character dice. <laughs> it's just like, okay, thank you. Fuck you very much, Java. Um, um, and he does roll a ton of musters. So I didn't want to see that, but it was it was very likely that he would roll a bunch of musters. Um Don't know what happened there. Um, oh, Mark actually... <laughs> I took so long deciding what cards to get rid of that Mark actually accidentally rolled twice. <laughs> so we had to reset the roll to find the original dice roll. Um, so we take a minute fixing that. Um, Mark doesn't want to move straight away. Um, so gets file into the pool. I guess you probably don't want to move too many times against this many eyes. Um, so file goes into the pool. We decide to put the tiles on here so that we remember for later. Now that gives the one benefit of that is it gives me the chance to play a Warmer Soren Toil um, before he moves. So, um, oh, I don't play Warmer Soren Toil. Do I not? I do. Okay, I don't know what's going on there. Maybe I changed the die that I was using. I was thinking about, oh, right, I was thinking about using a Palantir, but I decided actually I might want to save that Palantir in case I play Corsairs this turn um, because I can get the Southrons and Eastlings to war. Um, Mark does move, Fellowship of Mist, I start getting the South runs down, um, he gets another blue tile into the pool, I put a red tile into the pool, I'm just enjoy. I'm just like milking the cycling ability from the Chief, kind of enjoying that, and I draw into Ister's Bane, which is really great, given Mark's so high on corruption right now, perfect card really, um, for attacking the Fellowship, Mark um, draw swords and area door. I then I just play it's of Bane. I'm just kind of like having a bit of fun with the chief, just going through cards. Given how stacked this fellowship is right now, like maybe I would have been better off just going hardcore military. But I was kind of just enjoying the the novelty of of the chief and just just playing playing the the millions and millions of, of cards, especially because I had so many character dice this turn. So I play it's of Bane and I get a two reveal. So that's pretty cool. Gets Mark up to seven corruption, so really getting high on the old corruption stakes here. And the Fellowship is also revealed into Druidant. I then draw into Dreadful Spells. Um, Mark plays Swords and Area Door to get some dudes up here and draws into Wisdom of Elrond. And then I'm like, hell, um, let's soften up these, these stupid elves so that when I do attack into that horrible... Um, Galadriel minefield, I can hopefully have a few cheap hits beforehand. And I roll two hits, which is a really, like, very unlike. I feel like that very rarely happens for me with Dreadful Spells, probably the same for everyone else. But two hits from Dreadful Spells into a quite a small Lorien felt incredible. Um, why did Mark take. I feel like Mark took three hits there. Oh, no, I did get three hits. Wow, yeah, sorry, for some reason I counted two. Really, really good Dreadful Spells. Incredible Dreadful Spells. Go Dreadful Spells. I love you. Um, so now I'm like, well, now I can actually afford to let him muster in. You know, I'd rather have Woodland Realm even cheaper, like a super cheap Woodland Realm, um, and then let him muster once into into here, because I'm, I'm, I'm confident, I'm maybe being a little bit overconfident here. This I'm, I'm, I was well aware that this could come back to bite me. Um, but I was like, you know what? I think this is worth the trade-off. I think it's worth the gamble. I do have some strong some strong cards here. He's only rolling two dice against me, max. Um, so I think I can do it. 
so he musters, which I think is correct. Still, you got to you know give it a shot. Two, two, four HP against an army like this size, it can you know you can survive and then muster again next turn at least, which will make my life even more annoying. And by that point, I could be mincing through my my own army. I attack, <coughs> Sonat with the Devry of All Thank. He plays a Vantageous, which is perfect. Looking at his cards, so he had a few options there. Although you're probably not going to play, yeah, you're not going to play a Valor in this situation. So it's basically Confusion, Heroic Death, and a Vantageous. When you see a strategy card, I think it's wise to to play a Vantageous. Very likely, I'm going to be losing it. Um, this it's reducing the the dice in some way. Um, right, but then I just roll three sixes. So the dice are looking pretty good for me. Plus five on sixes at this stage. So yeah. <laughs> Fellowship's only rolled one die <laughs> at this stage of the game. Crazy. <coughs> now he's rolled three dice. Um, so Mark gets two hits back, but it's not looking good for the elves at all. Um, I decide to not dilly-dally. I decide to press and play Desperate Battle. I don't want him to have any chance. I want to kill that die, and I want to kill um, this Stronghold, and I don't want any chance of mustering next turn. Let's throw death. I get, I get my two hits. And um, Galadriel is dead. Sayonara. Um, oh, wait, no. No, 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 no. What am I talking about? She's not dead. She lives. She's alive. Because of the heroic death, obviously. I'm thinking too basey here. She can take use hero use. She can eat the heroic death and then the, the, they're fine. So I attack again. Um, I go no cards. Mark plays confusion. I roll a bunch of sixes. Way too many sixes, actually. So that was kind of overkill. Um, but um, Mark gets two hits against me, which is actually pretty good. Did I, did I take two hits then? Kills Isengard, Regular, and Lorien. I did. I did take two. Okay, cool. Good. Um, because he had one from the Confusion and one from the, the Elven dudes. Um, but yeah, so the plan has actually worked. You know, could have gone pear-shaped if, if Mark had rolled better musters a few turns earlier. But I think, that, I, think I, I played that pretty well. Managing the dice and making it really awkward for Mark. Um, also, doing what I did between the two strongholds has worked out really nicely because he's got Thranduils. He's had that up his sleeve for ages, which means that him having two extra two extra elites in here would have made this very, very hard. Whereas only one 5 HP compared to 7 HP is, is a significant difference, especially because he'll only be rolling on three dice. That's really good. <coughs> I draw uh, Morgul Wound and Horde from the East. Um, Mark draws King Brand's Men and Ents. Born Dark. I roll a bunch of eyes again. And another of these turns, I think this is the second turn I've had where it's purely musters and character dice. Seems to be the flavor of the week in uh, the, the, the dice pool today. Mark gets a pretty nice roll there. I'd be pretty happy to see that. Good, good options for the free people. Um, gambles on me not having Day Without Dawn. Um, which pays off because I don't have Day Without Dawn. I decide to... I, that's when I'm like, your work here is done. I really want to start cycling character cards and get the military on the move because I feel like I'm going a little bit too slow. Mark does have an absolutely colossal um, crew here. So if you can get into Mordor soon, then, um, you know, even though this is very high, uh, I need to get my skates on and start actually doing some damage. So I make, an, I make the decision to switch Witch Kings, to switch Kings, if you will. And leave one little schmuck on here, but I'm going to change Witch Kings to, to the conventional Witch King. Um, he then plays Thranduils, which is correct. Very nice. Draws into Range of the North. So now he's gone. He's got the, the two, two great um, cards to play for the Northern boys at just the right time. Um, I get the Witch King. I agonize about how to... <laughs> I was like, can you flip him? I can't remember what happened there, but we got the Witch King in there eventually. Then Mark plays Range of the North. Um, doesn't get any hits, which is good for me. A Gondorian! There's a wild Gondorian has appeared. Um, but yeah, we get the Northern guy in there. Um, so I'm like, oh boy. I don't like that. Um... I guess I'm attacking into Woodland Realm here. What cards have I got? I've got a Deadly Strive. Um, I've got two Deadly Strives. 
I don't want to play any of the other cards. They don't feel very valuable. It doesn't feel great to play. I guess I could have played Grond here. Um, Grond into Deadly Strife. Um, that could have been good, but I guess I think I'm thinking about saving Grond for later in a stronghold where it might provide more value. I'm not sure if I... And also, while it's unlikely, when there's this, these guys skulking around outside, mm, they're not at war. I probably don't have anything to worry about. I don't know. Maybe I should have played Grond there. Anyway, I just go straight for the Deadly Strife. Yeah, I think in retrospect, probably the wiser play is Grond into Deadly Strife so that he can't play Shield Wall or, you know, anything against me. Because he could easily have a, a Daylight here, and that would really be awkward. I roll a pretty bad Deadly Strife. I accidentally... I, but I, I get three hits, which isn't great. I think the average is at least four for Shadow. Um... He gets three back. So three each. But this isn't a particularly strong army. So I don't, I'm not too bothered. I then draw into a swarm of bats. I press. I play my swarm of bats. Mark no cards it. And I'm rolling pretty hot. So um, I take down Willem Realm. So all right. So I'm now up to four victory points um, on turn six. Looking pretty good for the military. Shadow. Um, the elves have been... Wipe that. I've got a Corsairs up my sleeve, so I'm like, nice, nice. Um, then he plays King Brands, though, and I'm like, ew, and draws into a Daylight. So um, this could be a nuisance. This could be a serious nuisance. I don't want this to um, become the bane of my life, so I, I'm going to have to deal with this at some point. Luckily, the North, the North aren't at war. If the North were at war, I'd be in a serious predicament. Um... I reinforce an Orth thing. Oh, yeah, because I've got all these musters. I'm like, okay, when you have a million extra musters, what do you do with them? I think a general safe bet is to muster the hell out of um, Isengard because you get extra value for those musters usually with his sounds ability, and you want to do it at some point. Um, plus, I do want to take down Rohan. Uh, Mark moves the Fellowship. They are hit twice, and I draw a Smeagol tile. Which means amazing value for We Won't Go Back. Great job, We Won't Go Back. And because it effectively, I didn't know this, but because it says um, add add two corruption points, it isn't you know like a hunt roll. It literally just goes straight onto the, the Fellowship track. So that's amazing. Great job, card. Love you. Love to see that. So now, if that hadn't happened, Mark's like still in like a... Not a great position at seven corruption. But there's only limited cards. I've got like, what, like Candles for Corpses. When you're up to nine, you're in very dangerous territory. Um, makes things really, really awkward. Um, so I do that. Um, keep mustering in, in Orthanc. And then with the third muster, I do the, the, the Sauron ability and yeah, get almost a full stack. Go on to turn seven. Black Cat to Command to return the Witch King. Great company. And Grimbjorn. Nice little scouts. Um, and Mark decides to declare into Minas Tirith. Get rid of Warmer Sauron Toil. Um, gets rid of Smeagol, so you lose some of the Meat Shield. Which could have been useful in this situation. Um, to just, you know, plow. You could just, like... You can just plow. <laughs> you can just plow your way through, potentially. It's risky because if, if like you get in like you're very very open to the me shoving an absolute metric ton of eyes into the pool in Mordor, and then every eye that you know goes above, say if every time he's hit by an eye, so I've got a little bit of a cold, um, could be really brutal. But you know maybe you draw into a Bilbo song, maybe you get there is another way, maybe you get a Nathalas, and then you can heal. Maybe you draw blue tiles. I think that's what I would have done. I think I would have just ploughed through it. And, I mean, War Missor and Tall does make that more awkward. But I think just with the sheer power of the meat shield and the fact that my military is going quite fast, I think that's what I would have done. Maybe you just died to corruption, but I think I would have chanced it. Um, I get we shall get it. Um, War Missor and Toil has got off the board. So there, there are definite benefits for this. It kills War Missor and Toil. It heals. Um, one eye is added. Mark gets a fairly nice roll. I don't know what I was doing with the dice there, but anyway, I, lo I lose Gothamog's die because I brought in the Witch King. 
Um, so I'm down to kind of more normal number of dice. And then this surprised me. Mark decided to separate Strider and Bozza into Minas Tirith. So I'm guessing the thinking here was <coughs> need to slow me down militarily because I'm looking quite strong militarily to just get a straight military victory. These guys can help get an extra die, give you another route to victory, potentially through military actions yourself. It does, however, mean that corruption, getting into Mordor and winning a corruption, sorry, a, a dunk, becomes significantly less likely because what, a, let's say this is six HP, one, two, three, so you're now on net two HP. The kind of, I've heard, I think Galahad say that the kind of, the way, the, the kind of, the, the, the spot where you, the par, I suppose, for the first step into Mordor is two HP. If you're on two HP, you've got a, you're probably about even to, to win the game. On a corruption, you know, typical 2.5 turns in Mordor um, dunk. But now you, this this fellowship's got to get into Mordor. They've got three more steps to go. If you heal a bunch, fine. But then if you sit and heal, that gives me loads of time to do military stuff. So, yeah, it's a very tricky balance. Very tricky balance. Let me know your thoughts on, on, on that separation there. Does give, does give options, though. Does give options to the free people. I stop combining armies here. To I want to just like make sure that I can attack this Dale army before it gets if the North get to war and start mustering. I really really don't want that to happen because that can just you know it threatens an attack on Dolgador. It threatens a take back of Woodland Realm. It threatens you know getting into Erebor and then if the Dwarves get to war then like you know just there's a lot of annoying stuff that can happen with that army. Um, Aragorn comes into play. Um, I do the kind of switcheroo. I really don't want to lose, even though he hasn't got a huge number. I think I noticed the previous turn he went down to one character card. So I'm like, it's very, very unlikely that he has two end cards right now. It's fairly likely he has one. Um, and I really don't want to to give him, you know, a backdoor way back into the game. I think four HP is probably the sensible balance of, of HP to leave an Orthanc. If you go over that, you're probably being too cautious. You're going to... It's a bit like taking a random on a Strider. Like... Um, Every so often you'll leave 4 HP, and then you'll get hit by multiple end cards, and then you'll lose Saruman anyway. But like that's only going to happen once every like 10 games you do this. So you just, I think you just got to chance it. And that extra HP can you know make all the difference in Helm's Deep. Um, so, uh, yeah, we flipped dudes, because I think we forgot to flip nations before. Put Helm's Deep under siege. Um, I decide here who... Because I don't have that many useful cards, um, I decided to play Black Captain to get the Witch King into here so I can cycle cards. Maybe that's overkill, overuse, but I'm, I'm doing two things here. I'm, I'm en enabling the... I'm doing three things, actually. I'm enabling card cycling, I'm using a Palantir as an attack die, and I'm enabling Nazgul uh, cards in combat. So there are three potential benefits to doing this um i don't think it's a bad play necessarily it also allows me to move nazgul down here for later um if i do call i could do corsairs into there and if i don't have the dice to move the witch king then um i sometimes you don't have any character dice it means i don't have to use a ring to get the witch king in here if i get desperate you know if i have to use that ring somewhere else so yeah let's ring some roundabouts ideally though i want to save the grand for um da so I think that's why I kept the Grand. I was thinking I can probably get this, hopefully get this down with a Swarm of Bats. Hopefully I'd use Swarm of Bats cycling to something else good. And then I can I can just, you know, mash up Helm's Deep with this mega army. What HP is that? That's a 15 HP army against a, a 6 HP army. So odds are certainly on my side. I play Swarm of Bats against the Daylight. Yeah, so, so um, Mark has Horn Dark. Daylight and a Valor, which all potentially can be used in this combat. Um, I don't. I roll two hits, so I'm still rolling pretty sweet. Up at eight. Up eight. Wow. Mark gets only one back, so it's not looking good for the um, Rohirrim at this point. I draw into Madness and Horror Slash for more bats. So I'm like, I'm using that again, especially because he could have some end cards up his sleeve. Mark was wisely waiting for the second round to play the Horn Dark. Um, Actually, because I guess he's probably worried about a swarm of bats. Makes a lot of sense. What he's not worried about is a second swarm of bats. 
insert evil laugh here. Um, so yeah, to that <laughs> that was a bit of that was a very good top deck card draw for me. Um, so, but I don't get any hits though, uh, nor does Mark. So pretty pretty rubbish. Um, I then press, don't get any hits again. So my kind of, uh, but Mark's not getting. The, unfortunately for Mark though, he's not getting many hits back. But I'm in that situation where this army is starting to dwindle. It's not looking anywhere near as safe now. I'm on 11 HP against 4 HP. Still good, but I kind of want to be in a position where this army isn't teeny tiny, and it can at least either defend itself from the Rohan, which can easily get mustered, or can go out and take over Rohan. So I'm like, I'm going to take my time a little bit more. Um, maybe use this to draw an actual... I don't want to play my Deadly Strife, obviously. So maybe I will use this Palantir to draw another strategy card to make it more likely that I can take this down smoothly. And Mark plays Grey Company in Minas Tirith, draws Guards of Citadel and Fear Fire Foes. I draw into um, a Relentless Assault. So I could have, in theory, I guess I could have played Rage and just got more dudes down here, but I, I'm kind of wanting to cycle cards here. I think the getting, I think actually, based on how this has gone so far, getting the Witch King in here has actually been very justified. I think it's it's been a, a good play because if I hadn't got that second swarm of bats, um, actually it wouldn't make any difference if I didn't roll any hits. But he could have rolled a ton of hits against me, and I would have done none against him. So I think it was it's been good. And I'm going to get another round of card draw out of it as well. Mark moves the Fellowship. I think we forgot to move them back. They should be on zero at this point, but they're on two. But we figured that out. I get a hit, and it's a three. So poor old Mark. <coughs> Not having a good time with the hunt. Takes the, the dwarf, and then back up to nine corruption. Still two steps away from Mordor. Terrible stuff. Terrible stuff. I attack Rohan again. Um, and I think the reason Mark decided to move was because it's looking like it's looking very like I could get up to eight victory points very quickly. He's probably figured out that I've got Corsairs at this point based on me telegraphing it with this massive Nazgul um, um, army landing. Well, Nazgul's all landing in Umbar. Somewhat suspicious. Um, and this is looking like it should be able to take down Elm's Deep. So that would put me up to eight. And then all I've got to do is take Pelagir and Dale, which, you know, between these two armies I can do. Um, so yeah, I think that's why Mark was like, I, you know, in an ideal world, Mark would want to sit here for ages and get loads of, you know, healing done. But if you want to have any chance of having Dunk as a possibility before I win militarily, I think, um, maybe, yeah, you just got to go. But then that does beg the question, why even go into Minas Tirith in the first place? If you're only going to get one heal, you know, not, not that much has changed militarily. All I've done is gone into Helm's Deep and my army in Helm's Deep was already pretty big. So my, sorry, or Northank. So I think... Based on the like this turn, you probably could have got into Mordor with a ring. Um, if you'd kept Smeagol and just gone for it. So I think that's what I would have done. And then, you know, then at least you're in Mordor. And, you you know, then who knows what can happen. It creates that potential. Um, so, yeah, you're getting value out of the, the separations and the, 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 the Minas Tirith move. Um, so I play Relentless, um, Mark plays Shield Ball, so I'm getting value out of Relentless, I decide to only kill one, to kind of get the balance right, but I'm only getting one hit because of the Shield Ball, and Mark gets two back, so yeah, I'm getting quite worried about Helm's Deep now, I'm getting quite concerned about how this goes, because if, if I have another couple bad rounds of combat, um, you know, maybe Mark draws another end card, and then he gets a crazy number of hits, um, I don't have any good cards to play in combat now, I, mean, I, I do have a great host actually, but... There's no guarantee of Great Host working with an army this size. It's going to be a 5 against a 3. Very likely, very common that you just don't get a hit, as I've proven in the last few rounds. And then the Great Host is wasted. He gets more hits back at me. So I decide I'm going to have to be a bit cautious here, slow play it a bit more, take my time. I'm not in a huge rush, so I'm going to have to start doing some mustering. I'm also, I want to make sure the Helm's Deep army that's left is not minuscule and weak and pathetic so that I can defend from the Rohan because they're now getting mustered this is the the danger of, of Rohan um maybe there was actually an argument for yeah maybe I should have put them under siege looking back actually because I had such a big stack what I could have done put them under siege split the stack in half and then gone over and taken over Rohan 
with the um, and then come back. I guess I was maybe being a bit greedy or just thinking the army, the stack is so big and I've got some cards that by the law of averages, I'm going to take down Helm's Deep and still have a big army left. As it's turned out, it hasn't worked out like that. So yeah, would you do you think it would have been better to take over Rohan first? What do you reckon? Um, that Because now Rohan is at war and strong. If I'd done it early, Rohan would have been, it would have been a pitifully small army in Edoras. I could have, you know, contained it by putting a guy in fold smashed down at arrest and then just, you know, returned to Helm's Deep with a solid-sized army um, and then finished it off that way. Yeah, maybe that's the, the, the sensible option. I start mustering an elite, mustering elites in Orthanc. Go on to turn number eight. Again, Olokai, which is handy. Wormtongue, less so. Mark gets Sweeper of the Swifter and Tommy Bombadils. I killed a Wormtongue. And yeah, the Captain Spare thing is still rubbing in my face. A million <laughs> um, character dice again. This is like the third turn, I think. Is it the third turn where I've just had character dice and musters? The painful thing about this is that I've got Corsairs in hand. Um, I can't play it, really, without using a ring. Um, so that's awkward. I've got Olakai in hand. Can't play it without using a ring. Yeah. <coughs> Um, Mark moves the fellowship. Double six. Oh my god, this this game is just cruel. And I get an eye, obviously. Of course, I get an eye. So Mark's revealed in North Athelion, um, kills Lor uh, Legolas, and now you're down to hobbits. You're on net seven corruption. You're not even in Mordor. Things are looking absolutely abysmal for the fellowship. Um, I played Morgul Wound just to rub it in. And that also puts me within like a very, very good chance. If I was to hypothetically, if I was to draw Candle's corpses, great chance of just outright winning the game. You know, it's average one point five hits on Candle's for corpses, so just a little bit of swing one direction, and I've just won the game. Um, so yeah, I think that was that was worth it for that alone. Mark plays guards the citadel. I keep mustering an Orthanc. I really want to get Helm's Deep down. The other thing is, if you leave an army here before without taking over, taking down Helm's Deep, you're then opening yourself up to help unlooked for, to just being attacked into by, you know, a big Rohit, Rohan army. So I want to just, like, get this sorted while I can. Um, at potentially the expense of other things I could be doing, but it's become my main priority. I also can't take too long. I also... I also I'm slightly wary of military hijinks at this point, you know, so I want to keep one muster up my sleeve. So maybe should have just done another muster here. I do have a ring. Yeah, maybe I've got a ring up my sleeve. But I'm also thinking, you know, if this goes well, I kind of want to use the ring to play Corsairs and then I can move leadership in here. So because of that, like if this goes down easy, I could potentially do Corsairs and take up the of this turn as well. So I want to have that option open to me. Hence, I decide to only move two rather than three. To Helm's Deep, which should be enough. Um, Mark gets a Rohan Reg in Edoras and Fold. I combine in, I move to Helm's Deep. He plays Tommy Bombadils, which is good for getting this activated. I go for Helm's Deep yet again. What do you play here? The, 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 the Great Host or the We Come to Kill? We Come to Kill is obviously great in this situation. I've got five elites. I decide to start with the Great Host because I know it's going to get value. And I think, on average, that we come to the Olokai could be more valuable here because I need a, forward mustering cards are really valuable for when you're attacking Dol Amroth, especially if he has some kid and ships bullshit up his sleeve, or I just have a really bad couple of rounds. I can then reinforce swiftly with the Olokai. So I'm kind of holding that in holding that in hand for Dol Amroth. Um, play the Great Host. Don't get any hits. Let's see what my sixes right now. Still plus four, still pretty good. I'm getting good sixes on the hunt, but not in combat. They dried up in combat. Mark gets two hits. Luckily, I can still get the hit out of Great Host. Um, however, I'm now kind of obliged to play We Come to Kill just to finish off these, these bastards because they just won't die. I think this is like probably the sixth round of combat in, in Helm's Deep. Um, I've lost a lot of guys in there. Um, so I press again, decide I have to play the Olokai. Um, I do. I get a hit, Mark gets no hits, and then I get the final hit on the reroll. So, yeah, 
all done. Thank you very much. See you in hell. I'm deep. Up to six victory points. Mark draws a card, draws into the red arrow. So not quite as valuable, but a scout is handy. Um, I start getting the Saturns fully to... Oh no, I start mustering Oliphants in here, in, in North Rune. Mark moves to Osgiliath with the Aragorn army, and I'm like, oh god. It's gonna be a free military attempt. But I'm like, yeah, I can probably, probably get to 10. Or he can get to um, four, hopefully. We'll see. And I actually, at this point, having just said that I was coming against 10, I decide at this point, I, I don't think I can actually risk playing Corsairs. Because if I play Corsairs, this army can waltz into Umbar. And with the North almost at war, Moria's open. Uh, you know, there's open strongholds in Moran, and he could do some kind of like sneaky. If he can get like two street cheap strongholds, if he's got Thrudena Knight to get to Dagalad, and he can also watch into Umbar, if maybe I draw like no musters next turn, <coughs> it's unlikely, but there's potential for just a straight military victory. So I decide to put the pressure on. Give up my aspirations of Corsairs, which, like, to be honest, it's because of, like, the if Helm's Deep took ages, and I, then I stopped rolling armies and Palantirs, so, like, it just never, the, the, it never really, there never really was an opportune moment to actually go for Dol, Dol Amroth. I'm also thinking, if, you know, maybe the other argument is, go for Dol Amroth, get 10 victory points. If I go to Dol Amroth, he plays Kirdan ships, I can't take it, then he gets Umbar. Then I could just be giving giving Mark the game. So I think I thought this was like the safer play. Um, it also puts pressure on Pelagir. If I can take two um, another stronghold elsewhere, put pressure on Pelagir. I can win just through the cities alone. Um, you know I can get four VP elsewhere. I don't need to take Dolamroth anymore. So it's giving me options at least. But didn't feel great. Um, Kellerborns and Wind from the West come into play. And I get Lure of the Ring and Half Orc. So good to have the forward mustering card in any kind of defensive shadow situation. Um, lots of Olokai, which would have been useful for that. Still got Hill Trolls up my sleeve somewhere, though. In this, which is, I've gone through over half a deck, well, half a deck at this point, pretty much. And then I do roll a really, really crappy roll. Really, really bad role for this situation because this is exactly the point of the game when eyes are essentially useless because Mark's all but given up on the fellowship. And Mark's rolled a ton of, you know, he's basically got six attacks here, <coughs> which puts me in a really tricky situation. Um, Mark plays the red arrow first to get these guys in. Uh, hmm. I think I would have preferred to keep the scouts and. Um, I suppose that does... I mean, you're protecting yourself there. Is that a priority? I'm not sure. Um, I decide to just... Make, I think in these situations, Shadow, you're generally... You want to um, bide your time and not use your dice too early, which is exactly what I just did. However, my thought was, if he has to ordain a knight, he plays it to Dagolad, I can only muster once. If I muster early... This is like the weakest spot on the board right now. If I muster early... I can muster twice, um, or I can muster, and then I can play, um, where is it? The Shadow Lengthens, right. So I can play, I can muster once, then I can play the Shadow Lengthens, if he's sat right outside here, um, to potentially get armies in here, and in here in one fell swoop. Or, you know, oh yeah, so he does that, I do this, then I can afford to do army moves. So then instantly I've gone from a you know a zero to a a, a three one, which is not that easy to take down. A three one, then I move Le they move Nazgul in. It's tricky. It's not there's no no guarantee that the Shadow will will win that fight. Whereas otherwise it would just be a three. It would just be one must. It would just be a muster. So I think I'm protecting myself by doing that early muster. I think it's it's the correct play. Um, he starts moving down from Rivendell, trying to put pressure on Moria. Which is smart. Um, I then do the move I just discussed. I get one guy in Moria. Mark moves, gets Elrond. 
then he could potentially do a double army move this turn. But he gets an extra die. Um, I pass. He gets the north to war. And this is where I definitely made an error, a strategic error. I used a ring. It's tricky, right? There's two things to think about here. I really, really don't want this to get mustered up. If this gets mustered up, then there's twofold problems. It makes taking Dale much harder. It puts pressure on the Woodland Realm, but it also makes this... If this army gets buffed, it has a genuine chance of taking down Dolgador. This army, as it is right now, when I've got Hoa Fox and Goblin Men in hand, and musters next turn, presumably, means that um, if this army does decide to do some hijink hijinks down here, I can muster it effectively, and I think odds are in my favour to hold in Dolgador. Um, so I think that's my priority. Um, I'll go for the Vale of Karnan and try to attack into this using the, the the character die so that I can attack into Dale this round and make sure that whatever happens, Mark cannot muster in Dale. By prioritizing that, I leave myself open to something else, which I hadn't really considered quite the extent of it. Um, so this allows Mark to move into Holland. Because I was thinking, okay, I can muster in here. I can muster in here. It's going to be fine. No, I can't. <laughs> no, I can't. Because Mark can attack into here now, and then the first move next turn, or even using Elrond's ability straight away, can just try and do this before I can do any mustering in Moria. So I was being a little... I Probably better to... I mean, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You know, if I had mustered in here, because there's no leadership here, I wouldn't be able to do any... Oh, the other thing is that I can't even attack because there's no bloody leadership here anyway. So, like, mm. But at least this army is in a position to attack into Dale ASAP. Um, ugh, I don't know. It was bad. It was bad. I should have waited. But again, this, I was being a little bit... I wasn't thinking as much as I probably would have in a... Um, in a competitive game as in a friendly. But yeah, I think you probably should err on the side of caution and leave your um your final die, your your it just really sucks. Maybe what I could have done is move the leadership here. So then I next turn I could have at least had leadership in the fight in Dale. But if Mark gets two extra musters in here, then it also sucks because then he's almost definitely he's got a great chance of taking Dolgador potentially. So I don't know. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Am I dumb? Probably, yes. Um, so yeah, I do move leadership around. I move one leadership into here. I move one leadership into here. I decide to keep most of it here, so it's a bit of a lame move. Um, but yeah. And he naturally, Mark puts more under siege. Mark draws into a sudden strike. Um, or Path of the Wozes, I guess, actually. <coughs> that could actually be really good, actually. Um, it's moving this army. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. So there is a, there's, I mean, I suppose you kind of need this to protect you from that victory point, so maybe it's not worth it. But there could be an argument for making a mega stack with Path of the Woses. Um, but it's a bit slow. We take two dice to get that army to Osgiliath. You're basically, by marching it, you're going to get to Druidon anyway, so it's not actually that great. Anyway. I draw Break of the Fellowship and the Fighting Urukai. Um, I just realized, actually... Oh, no, I was thinking I could actually get one cheap. But if it was on Gollum in this situation, I could have got them up to 11. Um, I kill Lord of the Ring and Fighting Urukai. Don't feel like those cards are particularly useful right now. Um, so, naturally, Mark attacks straight away. He has to use the Will of the West to do so. Um... And yeah, so I was I was kind of slightly cavalier. Oh, I could put my half orcs and goblin men in there. I can muster in there, or I could use the the um, palantir. I could use the ring to muster in. Nope, no, you can't. Now you're in trouble. However, it's by no means a guarantee that this guy. You know, you've only you only rolling on two dice, so maybe these guys can survive. I played dread, so getting the um, getting the Nazgul in here was actually very useful. It makes dread and despair. Actually, you know, I'm only killing one die, but that's 50% of his attack dice, which is really good. 
Um, so I play my Dread and Despair. It, it works because Mark's 5 is rolled on the reroll, so the Valid doesn't do anything. And I get a hit. So good stuff. He has to press. Um, this is probably objectively very, very dumb. Um, but I decide to use another Dread and Despair because I really want to hold this. If I can hold this, then that kind of makes his entire military game much, much less stable. So even though it feels kind of ridiculous to use a Dread and Despair in this situation, if I can pull it off, um, it could be quite big. It could be quite big. It, on the the balance of things, probably should have just kept it and just, you know, gambled on luck being on my side because yeah, still, still a good chance that, you know, I don't roll a five anyway. He has another sudden... Did he play sudden strike last round? I can't remember what he played last round. But anyway, so he plays sudden strike. Misses, but then gets a hit. No! So my, I've wasted Grond. <laughs> and um, effectively wasted Dread and Despair. Well, kind of. I did I did get him to one die. So he, he, needed, to, he needed to roll a six there. Um, but he still had two two shots at it because of sudden or three shots with the reroll, so not unthinkable. Still a fifty fifty overall or something like that. Um, I don't hit, and Mario is down, and my kind of cocky cocky play um, up in here has really bit me on the ass. The one benefit is that I can now attack into Dale um, and make sure that this can't muster. This is another very sloppy, friendly play. I'm, I'm sure I wouldn't have... I, I'd, I'd like to think I wouldn't have done this in a competitive game. I play fucking Deadly Strife. He's obviously got a Scouts, man. You, he's got nine cards left and the deck is turn 10. What are you doing? Look, I'm, on that note, look how many cards Mark has gone through by intent for, for, for the free people. That's quite remarkable. Um, but yeah, of course he's got a Scouts. He's probably got two Scouts. Well, he, you know. But... Um, yeah, that was objectively incredibly dumb. Should have just not played a card there and just, you know, accepted that it was going to go. Yeah, you, you, that was just really, really just bad. Bad play by a silly man. Um, so he naturally scouts away. But I do have musters and I have half orcs. So I, I'm confident Dolgood is going to be all right. I don't have, you know, orcs multiplying again, but I could draw into that. I don't think that's come out yet. Um, Mark does two moves. I muster. Mark puts it on the siege. I then play Harbox and Goblin Men. So, 5 HP against 5 HP. Really not looking good. Not looking good at all. Um, and the down, the tricky thing is, like, this army could come up here and help to finish, Gant to finish the job. But then that gives me a route to an, a cheap three victory points here so in a straight race he hasn't got any army attack army dice this turn to attack or like any kind of attack dice so this is looking like a failed attempt and because this army's now gone this direction rather than this direction it opens up a nice juicy target for me in Erebor which I didn't really have otherwise because this army's kind of tied up with this army so it's becoming a real chess game now um on the balance of things, maybe Mark could have gone to Erebor to defend um, and then mustered more slowly and tried to do something. Because, like, where else am I going to get my victory points at that point? Where do I get the two more VPs? This army can't go here because that leaves Umbar open. I don't have another clear route to two victory points, but now you've kind of presented me with one. Um, so, yeah, maybe that's a, 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 another option. You know, you could... Another option would have been to send this army up here Having said that, once you go into Erebor, I just combine and then just just then it, it still go for Erebor, but it just takes longer. So so yeah, okay. <coughs> You're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I move leadership up here. Now I'm thinking about going for Erebor, um, especially while Mark doesn't really have the dice to do anything with this army. So I'm not, and also Gondor's not even at war. I actually forgot that Gondor wasn't at war, <laughs> which is another silly thing. Because at turn 10, you just kind of... And like with Aragorn and Boromir bumbling about, I just kind of like... In my mind, I was like, well, of course they're at war. Of course he can attack. And so I was worried about all this, you know, new... Um, this is actually... Yeah, I've, I've done this in a couple of games now. In late game, I just by default assume that the elves and Gondor are at war. You need to... I need to really like... It's such an amateurish mistake to make. 
but it's almost just like muscle memory. You're like, it is turn 10. Of course, they will be at war. Um, so yeah, I just slightly risky, but this is still a mega HP army. Um, and I want to, yeah, I need to take this down. I've lost my Nazgul in here, so I've only got four, four HP of Nazgul on the board, I think. Um, oh yeah, one one Nazgul in this army. I need. To, I think I, it's right to leave that there, actually. Um, Mark draws a card and draws there up and back again. I what did I do there? I move the Nern guys into play. So that was for kind of the. You can end up in a tricky situation here where this army attacks. You go into siege in Minas Morgul, and then. They just keep going, and if there's no army in Gorgoroth, they can get. They can even like um, through a day and a night into Barad-dûr. So um, it's kind of a bit of an administrative, boring move. But I think getting this army in here is potentially helping me out in future. Um, and then I can also move it into one of these armies to defend, depending on which way Mark decides to go. If I want to, or even move just like you know, so I can do something. So yeah, I combined up here as well with the other move, and now I attack into Erebor. Put the dwarves down one. Um, Mark plays. I will go to loan. I so I think about what to do with these dudes. Um, he gets the two hobbits out. Mark told me after the game that he was worried about Candle's corpses at this point. So I will go alone. Not only get Smeagol into play, but also gets the hobbits into this army. So you two. I think that's a really clever play because yeah, if I next turn I draw Candle's corpses, play it first move. Um, because because it's no no golem. I'm rolling on fours can just win the game. So yeah, I think that's... And the Fellowship is no way in hell going to get to Barador. Sorry, get to the dunk today. So yeah, makes perfect sense. Golem takes over. I'm attacking Erebor here. What have I got? I've got a Muma kill and a Crueler's Death. I was kind of saving the Muma kill for... I, I figured that if Mark's going to go to... If he's going to move to either North or South Athelion, he's probably going to go to North Athelion, so I can't attack into him. Um, which... Benefits him in one sense, but also does leave this army open to a Shadow Lengthens. So I could have, I was kind of thinking I'll save the Shadow length, the, the shadow Lengthens for that. But I'm feeling like if I can get Erebor dead, Mark can't win anyway this turn. Because again, oh, Gondor are now at war. And oh, no, did I move them down by accident? <laughs> anyway, I think I moved them down. because I, I actually was like, Gondor must be at war. We must have forgotten to move them down. So I moved them down manually. And then we realize that and correct it in a minute. But I'm like, okay, so I don't feel the desperate need to save this Shadow Lengthens anymore. The Nern army is now in place. I don't really have an obvious second move anyway. So, and therefore, I'll use the Mimikill and Erebor. He plays a Daylight, which is a great counter for Mimikill. I roll my fives the wrong way round, so I get no hits. Um, just deleted those hits there. Lack of hits. Mark. Um, I think I'm, I removed Mark's dice somehow. Anyway, um, Mark got uh, looks a bit. Um, did he get no hits back? I, I don't know what happened there. Something happened. But anyway, I I I, I downgrade and and keep pressing. Um, I pray get a desperate battle. Mark gets terrible rolls back, so I get two hits. So nine HP against four HP. I've got a cruel as death. I only got four Nazgul in here, but. Roll on five, still worth this shot. Play Cruel's Death, get two hits. Um, Mark gets three back. So it's six HP against two HP. Pretty hairy, but I've still got a great chance of taking this down. Um, it might just take a bit longer. Mark starts mustering Gondor toward the end. So the dwarves are already now down because of the attack. Um, I muster an elite in Orthanc because I'm thinking. Um, I need to have an arm. I want to combine these two armies and go for the rest, potentially to get my other victory points. Um, as well as taking Pelagir, but he can take back Pelagir potentially with this army, so I'm going to need another way of threatening to get my final victory point after I presumably take Erebor. Mark gets Gondor to war. The right way this time, not by me just giving him it to him because I'm an idiot. Um, and what does um, what do I do there? And I get another elite in Minas Morgul for when he presumably is going to go for some kind of desperate attack at the end, if he wants to try and pressure that military victory. I draw the Lydus Hour, so Lydus, Lydus Hour, Lydus Eye, and a great host, which is great for Erebor. Really, really need that. Um, and um, Mark draws dead men. So 
Sudden Strike, more crucially. That's great for this army. And Shield Wall. <coughs> also Faramir's. Um, so nice cards. Nice cards. And then I rolled this die. This bunch of bullshit. <laughs> I mean, okay, like rolling a ton of musters when you're on the defensive as a, as a shadow is, is fine. But I need a certain number of attacks to keep the pressure on. Um, so it's actually a really awkward one. And then Mark rolls like a million attacks. And he's got a ring. Um, so I'm like, ah! This could actually really go down to the wire now. Um, I've actually ended up at this point. I've gone back down to zero. Um, I, I mean, obviously, I had incredible dice luck early in the game. It's gone all the way back down to zero now. Uh, Mark's still down, so he hasn't had great, great um, dice luck in combat. But um, but yeah, but it's definitely like, for how good my dice were earlier, to balance it out, they must have been just as bad in the second half of, the, of the, this game. So hence, you know, Erebor and, and Helm's Deep have, have proven quite tricky. So Mark doesn't dilly-dally. He gets the army to here. And I didn't see this coming, actually. So um, I think this is a really clever play, because now Mark... By moving this army back here is making my giving me some very tricky decisions because Mark knows that by moving this army away, it gives me Pelagir, which gets me up to if I can take this, then that gets me up to 10. But then, if he can take back Dale, then I'm back down to nine. And then, if Mark can take Minas Morgul, then that puts him up to four. So it's like a crazy combination here. So this is a very interesting turn with a lot of potential like pathways that you can take. There's also, because of my lack of dice, if I've got a few more attack dice, I can probably combine these two armies and relatively comfortably take Edoras as well. But because of my paltry three attacks, um, four if I get the mouth, um, I, I'm really limited. So I think about this for a little while, and since he's still two attacks away from Dale, I figure my best bet is to attack Erebor, kill it with my great host, which I think I've got a great chance of doing, um, and then once that's done, move this army back into here, combine it with maybe some wooden rum or whatever's left, and then I can put the, I've, then I've got a solid chance of holding Dale because I've got all the rerolls, I've got the six defensive bonus. Um, and that gives me a shot of that. Then I can take Pelagir, um, and hopefully that will get me over the line. And then I just need to hold Minas Morgul as well. So there's a lot of moving parts here. So I go for Erebor. Um, I naturally play Great Host. He plays a Shield Wall, which if you think about it, doesn't help because Great Host comes after Shield Wall. So if I got two hits, he would block one, and then I would add one from Great Host anyway. So yeah, the Shield Wall effectively is, is useless in this fight, as far as I understand it. But then I don't roll any sixes. I roll a ton of twos. I don't need twos, man. I need sixes. Um, so anyway, that does mean that I get marked down to one. Draw to Devry Vortang, which is like utterly useless in every conceivable situation. <laughs> so like a dead card. <coughs> he puts me under siege in Minas Morgul. I consider a field battle, realize that's the dumbest decision I could ever make. Don't do that. Um, I Now I figure... Um, because I need to be able to offend Dale, I, if he gets into Dale before me, then I'm in a really, really tricky spot because I don't think... I think this army attacking out into Dale basically doesn't stand a chance. Um, and then by doing, you know, two army moves at once, he can then also threaten getting into Pelagir. So then... Like, uh, uh, it's it, uh, it's just so bad. So I figure I got a chance it on taking down Erebor, rolling an actual six for once in my life after you know not roll the kind of the uh, the desert of sixes in the last few turns. So I go for it for for Erebor again, gambling on Erebor going down. Played this to cycle cards, even though that was really dumb actually because I'm like, oh, I can cycle cards to get into a more useful card. Lindesai is actually really useful. Words of Power is really useful for cancelling this guy um, later on. So that's, you know, well, I suppose it's only one leadership. But I could have saved it for like later in that fight when he's a captain of the West and he's uh, providing two leadership. So, yeah, I think... Um, 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 
Maybe I could have drawn into what what would be something better. Brent's, I've got no I've got no Nazgul leadership. Yeah, I've got no Nazgul leadership here anyway, and I've got no bloody character dice, so I can't even get Nazgul leadership here. So yeah, there's not much I'm gonna draw into this, but Oh wait, I can't even play words of power in this fight, because there's no Nazgul. Okay, okay. Fair enough. I, I take it all back. Talking in circles here. I do roll a goddamn six. So I kill Erebor. I cycle into a, a, a red tile. Um, Mark, quite rightly, puts pressure on Dale and on um, Heligir. Um, <coughs> I figure the best balance is to attack into... Hold, try and get Dale held. And then I've still got a solid chance of taking down... Because this army is really big. Captain Obvious over heart. This army big. Um, but even if he musters, it's still... This is 12 HP. Even without leadership, I've got a... He's not going to be able to get much leadership. So I've got a solid chance of just taking down Pelagir. So let's get these boys into Dale. I do consider moving two across, moving one across. Ultimately, I decide that... Um, 5 HP against 5 HP, me with the defensive bonus and the additional leadership. I'm, it's heavily in my favor. Um, and if I leave two in there, then he's actually got a fairly decent shot at taking back Woodland Realm. Um, and I've only got one more attack, which I'm saving for Pelagir anyway. So I decide that this is the kind of the best balance. Um, anyway, Mark's not focused on that. Mark's focused on Pelagir. Mark must in Pelagir. We talked about this after the game. I think actually what Mark might have been would have been a quite a clever play here would have been to use Elrond's die to um, muster twice. Although it would, given the, the the way things have worked out, would he have ever ever had the chance to use that muster? Because if he did use Elrond's die to muster another thing. I would then get the mouth. Then I would be able to then attack into this army anyway. So, and you want to, the whole army to be in one big stack. So yeah, maybe that wouldn't have worked. Maybe that still wouldn't have worked anyway. Um, I muster the mouth inside Minas Morgul, which is perfect because it gives me additional leadership here. And because he has to prioritize, because I was thinking, oh, if I muster in the mouth into here, then he attacks into here straight away and wins the fight then i can't even then do another attack into here to uh get up to 10 victory points anyway because i won't be able to have a set you know a um i can't i won't have the mouse ability so this was a, a, a risk if mark had just gone gone for glory and tried to take it out straight away but <clears throat> yeah. i think the smarter play is to give yourself two Victory conditions or two chances of prolonging the game. You know, get the army into Pelagir and also have an attack into here because this aren't this isn't going to change. This army isn't going to get any stronger from now. So at least this gives you a secondary option. Um, so yeah, so Mark quite rightly gets combines in Pelagir. I use the mass ability to attack from West Rondo into Pelagir. I don't have any, oh sorry, I got moved way too fast there. So I don't have any cards to play. Um, Mark has a sudden strike but only one leader. So the Sunstrike, he's kind of saving for this combat. Um, so I roll one hit, Mark rolls four hits. So a very, very good start. I actually think I took one hit too few initially, but anyway, I, I keep going automatic hits. So anyway, um, so now it's pretty much an even fight, almost even HP wise. Um, so I get two hits, Mark gets two hits, six versus five. I get two hits, Mark gets two hits, four versus three. I get one hit, Mark gets one hit, three versus two. I get one hit, Mark gets no hits, three versus one. And then at this point, Mark's like, all right, that's probably probably GG because even if, I mean, he can attack into Dale, but it's not looking great. He does have the sudden strike. That could be good here actually in Dale potentially. Um, but anyway, looking very desperate for the free people here. Um, I say, you know, you still got a chance. We've seen crazier things happen. I miss. Mark gets a hit. Two versus one. And then Mark goes for the sudden strike in a desperate attempt to save Pelagir. It hits. And then it, I hit. And then he hits again. 
and everyone dies. And I don't take Pella gear, so I'm stuck on nine victory points. Like, oh, what a crazy game. <coughs> so now it's all on these guys to take down this. So there's six HP here. And Mark has 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 HP. So 10 HP against 6 HP. Um, if this was the reverse and it was the free people defending against the Shadow Army, you would pretty much say that the defending army is has the advantage. You know, they haven't got double my HP. Um, I've got three leadership, which is more than the vast majority of, you know, defensive strongholds for the free people have. Um and he doesn't have great offensive cards. He's got good cards. You know, Daring Defiance is good. I don't have any defensive cards. Shadow rarely does have good defensive cards, except for Dread and Despair. Um, but the Brave, the Brave Stand is, again, it's more of a defensive card than an offensive card. It's, it's a great card to have in this situation, but it's not going to, like, smash down a stronghold usually because you still need to roll a good dice. Um, so I think on, the, on, on balance, you'd probably expect to hold here. Um, but the free people certainly got a good shot. Using that sudden strike, you have to kind of do it, because otherwise, probably GG. Probably GG. But, um, um, and it did save, it saved Pelagir. So the sudden strike was the correct play. But it does, it was by far your best defensive card here. So it's a, Mark was really agonizing over that decision, understandably, because it's a really, really tricky one to make. I think it, Probably the correct one. Um, I guess you could use a Sun Strike to attack into this, but is that any better than here anyway? I don't know. So Mark goes for glory. Plays Brave Stand. I can only roll one dice because he's got a million. This is a pretty epic battle here. He's got Aragorn, Boromir, two Hobbits charging into Minas Morgul. He rolls two hits. No, no hits, sorry. He rolls nothing. Um, I roll one hit back. Um, Mark presses. Mark gets two hits. Um, I because he can't even use the Daring Finance because I'm not playing any cards. He probably knows I'm not going to play any cards because I didn't in the first round, so the Daring Finance is effectively useless. I get three hits back, so the sixes are back on the table. So three hits each. I'm down to four, but now it's it's a four versus four. No cards. Not looking good. Not looking good. Mark presses, and yeah, the dice just aren't there. They're just not there. Gets a six. I get one hit back, but now it's three v three. And and that's what we called it. You know, he can't press anymore. And that's we decided that was that was the game. So he conceded. Because if you look at the board state right now, um, okay, maybe, you know, maybe Mark rolls some crazy roll, next roll, I roll, you know, a million eyes, and he rolls a bunch of stuff, and somehow it's possible. But like Gondor is like there's one guy like in Gondor going like, hey, uh, uh like, you know, the John Travolta meme. He's just, like, looking around. Like, wh where's everybody gone? Um, so, and how much can they muster, actually? And there's just a bunch of regs left to muster. I've got three musters, so I don't know what the play is here. But, like, I can muster a bunch of Oliphants and then just march to Pelagir. Um, if he defends in Pelagir, I could keep going to the lab. Like, it's, it's like, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a lost cause. I can also go for... For Edoras, like, there's no way the free people are gonna a win militarily and b not lose militarily. So yeah, the game was over. But yeah, pretty epic one, I thought. Um, hence the, the video's taken almost an hour and a half. Um, yeah, I think I was a bit sloppy. Looking back, you know, as it as it happened, allowing him to get Moria wasn't terrible because if he had got a big army here, he would have been able to take Dolgador anyway. I think. If, this, if he got two musters in here, he probably would have taken Dolgador anyway. Um, but in the measure, probably still giving up a cheap stronghold in this situation. Yeah, probably better to to muster in here an extra guy. If I'd had an extra guy in, inside here, an extra elite, so I'd had three HP against four HP, I think he never, he's very, very unlikely that he takes it down. Incredibly unlikely. <laughs> it was hard enough for him to take one HP. So that was probably the big misplay on my part. I'm sure there are others. I can't remember. I spit this game for so long. I can't remember what what else happened in the game. <laughs> but yeah, an interesting one. What went from you know looking like a very routine shadow victory 
um, to when the, then the dice, you know, like the dice kind of swung halfway. And I was rolling tons of sixes, stopped rolling sixes, suddenly Helm's Deep became a quagmire. I wasn't able to then finish Dolamroth using Corsairs. It gave Mark time to build up a military force. And then because of that apocalyptic dice roll, it gave him the chance to get a cheap Mario because I got a little bit cocky. So it does kind of show how games can swing. And this game ended up being pretty close considering it looked like an absolute, you know, um, cakewalk for the shadow at one point. Um, yeah, so funnily enough, by the end, I was actually... Um, okay, there was a point when I was negative on sixes, but now it ended up being plus one, so Mark was negative two on hits. So overall, pretty balanced combat dice. Um, slightly better for the shadow, but didn't feel like that for the first half of the game, that's for sure. I had pretty freakish dice as well. I was plus ten on characters and plus six on musters. Negative eight on H's and negative six on armies. So I said this to Mark, like, because most of my attacks were quite localized, I kind of like this army moved to here. Uh, uh, like, this army moved to here. I didn't actually do a lot of big army movements across the board. Most of them, yeah, this army moved to here. Like, so it didn't hurt as much as it would have perhaps in other games. Um, but still, all, you know, you'd always prefer to have army dice to, to, to character dice. It's just a lot more efficient. And hybrids then give you the chance to muster as well. Um, not that I was short of mustering potential. Plus four and eyes as well. Those seem to come in big batches. Got lots of big eye rolls across the game. Mark's dice are a bit more balanced. Um, heavy on movement, but in a game where movement wasn't actually his friend a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, interesting one. I think in, from Mark's perspective, the big decisions were around i think there's a big question mark around the three mark has had incredibly bad luck with strider strider random draws so i can see why he did what he did but i think this is an example of when like that can come back to bite you and i do i do i don't think i would have i think i would have just bludgeoned through with the mega mega band of brothers and just kept kept smeagol in play and just tried to use him as a meat shield because while this opened up the military game. If it wasn't for that freak role, I would have comfortably been able to defend Moria by mustering. Um, and I think, as as proven, you know, Mordor was a bit too strong to be able to for this army to be able to comfortably get two victory points that way. And I wasn't going to once once it became clear there was a big army here, I was never going to open the door and get give you a cheap umbar. So I think, on measure, personally, I reckon even though corruption was high. Keeping Smeagol in, praying you don't draw any more Smeagol. I guess no, I gave up that that card. So yeah, and just just going for it, I think would have been slightly better play because my military, as it happened, did slow down quite a lot. And you still had plenty of time to muster um, dudes in in here in Gondor. I don't know. As it happened, Mark got very very close to winning. So maybe he did do the right thing. Um, but uh, but yeah, a lot of lot of interesting decisions on this one. Funny game, funny game. Cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you're having a great weekend or whenever you're watching this. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye.